That's so good. And Kim, I mean, I don't know if you all know her story. Tell us a little bit about your, uh, what you've you, been through. What God's yeah. you through. God has been faithful. Um, I know many of you may have experienced a life interrupted moment. Uh, four years ago, I experienced that myself. Uh, my husband of 24 years passed away. He had been going through a, a, a health challenge for off and on for like five years, but you never really expect them to right. pass away. You just, in all hope, you still, you, you're hoping that you're believing that they're going to come out on the other side. And needless to say that it was a very difficult journey to walk through, to see him suffering, to see him going through, to see him battling all of the different uh, health challenges that he was going through. But during that time, I had to cling to Philippians 4 and 6. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned about the Word of God, about how powerful the Word that it will not return void, Christy, when you said that. And Philippians tell us not to, 4 and 6 tell us not to worry about anything. That's a huge feat. Not to worry Absolutely. about anything when you're, right. when you're looking at the love of your life, suffering and sick and going through, and it's very difficult to yeah. walk through that. And it says to pray about everything yeah. and to thank God for what he's done. And the peace of God will surpass, all, in verse 7 says about the peace of God surpassing all understanding. Yeah. So I really had to cling to Philippians 4 and 6, and I had to really walk that verse out. It wasn't easy. It was very difficult. I remember there was so, we were so stressed. It was so discouraging. I remember the physical organ of my heart actually aching. It was so stressful. But I had to turn to God and we prayed and we just believed that God will restore him, uh, you know, in the process. Yeah. When he passed away on September 11, 2012, I was walking in a peace that I could not explain. When the doctors told me that they worked on him for 30 minutes, I was walking in a peace that I could not explain. When I had to walk down the hall and tell my daughters that their father was gone, I was walking in a peace that I could not explain. So because the, in Philippians 4 and 6, it says, do not worry about anything, pray about everything, tell God what you need and thank him for what you've already, what he's done. In verse 7, it starts with the word and. Whenever there's a connecting word, and is connecting word, it goes back to the verse before that. You have to tie the two verses together. And the peace of God that surpass all understanding will keep your heart and your mind. I was walking in the law. I was experiencing the promises of, of, of Philippians 4 and yeah. 7, where God said he will guard your heart and your mind with that peace. Right. And in the subsequent years following, I've still been drawing from that same peace because it's his peace that has kept my mind. Yeah. I remember someone walking up to me and telling me, they said, wow, you've made widowhood look easy. I said, no, you're looking at the face of grace. You're looking Absolutely. at the peace of God on my life. There's no way I could have walked this journey without the peace of God. Right. And to tell you the truth, I'm really one thought away from not being at peace. So true. I'm one thought away of wishing, wow, what in the world happened? Yeah. I'm one thought away of, like, I signed up for 88 to be 88 as a widow, not 44. I signed up for us to, to have our grandchildren coming over to visit us. I signed up for my daughters to be walked down the aisle with their dad. Yeah. I signed up for him to be at their, my youngest daughter's high school graduation. I didn't sign up, so I thought, to right. be a widow at 44. So one thought away from what I feel like I've been cheated or I've been missed right. can com com plummet me back to a, why the shoulda, coulda, woulda. But God is faithful. Yes, he is. Yeah. God has been faithful to me and my daughters. We have walked in a measure of peace that I cannot explain and only can be experienced. Well, and, and just watching you, Kim, I mean, I, I know you've had down days, mm -hmm. but in all appearances, you, you were, you were at peace. Yeah. I mean, I remember when it first happened and I, I was just like, wow, I, you know, you would have to be picking me up yeah. off the floor and you just walked with such grace through the whole process. And for your girls, Marielle and Simone, to see that, I mean, I know that is gonna stay with them forever. So Marvin passes mm -hmm. and you're having to sell some of his things, you're having to, mm -hmm. you, you sold your home, you moved, you had to change everything. Mm -hmm. So what, was it still that verse that was getting you through that? Or were there some things, other things that you grabbed hold of to help? I mean, because you were having to pull yourself up for the sake of your two daughters yes. and yourself and start completely over. Yes. One, of my, one of the things my daughter said, she said, Mom, when Dad passed away, she said, I saw you run to God and not from God. She said, I've watched you walk through this. 
and the peace that you've had and with God, the grace that God has given you. And I've had to just to lean in on the word. Now, I'm not going to say that I haven't had some very, very difficult days. Yeah. As recently as 25 minutes ago before we came in here when you yeah. said you have to go into some places that you don't want to have to go into. Yeah. But I know that what God has brought me through, he's using that story to help someone right. to get through Amen. what they're going through. Absolutely. And it's not all about me. Right. It's not about me. And you're right. We did have to start all over. I did yeah. have to sell all of his things. And I don't have any biological family here. Grace Church is my family. My relatives live up north, but Grace is my family. That's right. So don't everything, ever <laughs> everything has changed. Everything is different. Every, nothing's no longer the same. I don't look at things the same. I don't look at different. I've, I've learned so much in the last past years about who I am yeah. and where I'm going, where God is taking me. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, my best days are still in front Absolutely. of me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know that. I know that the rest of my life is going to be the best of my life. God is re literally rewriting a whole new story for me, a whole new book, not Absolutely. another chapter in the same book, right. a whole new book altogether, because he is that. the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes. And he is faithful. He is faithful. I don't understand it. And I will probably li uh, leave this earth not understanding why, but it doesn't matter because God is faithful and he's going to make it up to me. He's going to make it up to my daughters. Yes, and I know is. I have not seen, I have not seen. That's right. Ear have not heard, neither yeah. has it entered into the heart of me and the things I know that God has for me. That's right. Because my faith has taken me someplace. Yeah. I know that God, he is, he is now my husband. He has been our provider. He has made a way. And right. the things that he has done in the last four years has literally blown my mind. The relationship that I have with him, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. I haven't just gone through what I've gone through. I've grown through it. Right. And I've right. got me to, to know God more intimately than I've ever known him before. And I know he speaks to me. I know there's some times he'll just wake me up in the middle of the night like my husband did when he was living, you know, for a time of intimacy. The Holy Spirit wakes me up like that, too. And we just spend time together in the middle of the night That's communing amazing. with each other because he is now my husband and he has provided for us. And I'm excited about where God is leading us. That is beautiful. And I don't know. It's amazing. Keep it together. Um, Kim has a book that she's written. Um, when, when Marvin was a world famous drummer, if you don't know about him, Marvin McQuitty, just unbelievable. And um, but being in the music industry that he was in, she had to deal with all kinds of stuff. And how God even kept you through all of that and helped you stay sane, you know, when you were just worried about having a meal uh, to feed your girls and just how were we going to make it and everything. God was so faithful to you even then. And so her book talks about a lot of that. And you've got to get it if you don't have it. It is so good and so much about his faithfulness. Um, as a woman, starting over again, how did you decide, Kim? Because I've seen you, you got your real estate license. Um, you know, you're working at the church. You, you're just juggling all these things. How do you find in your time to still go after the, that God dream, though? Very good question. A lot of what I believe God had called me to do was wrapped into Marvin, what I believe yeah. that we were going to do the ministry together. Marvin had gotten his Christian counseling certification. I was working on mine at the time of his uh, passing and, and never got around to finishing it. I would tell people that we were going to use those counseling certifications to go out and empower other couples in the industry, that their marriage too can, can overcome, that they can, they will ride some hard waves, but God is faithful and he can bring them out on the other side better than they were before. Yeah. And I would tell people my partner passed, but my passion never died. Oh, that's so it good. It never died. Yeah. And it kept coming back, and it kept coming back. And God challenged me last summer to go back and get my Christian counseling certification. <laughs> so much so to the point that he confirmed that I should have been there, that when I got there, I didn't really know the lady who was there. I'd never met her before. A couple of days before that, when you mentioned that I had moved, we had moved. We, had to, we literally started all over. But before I moved, I noticed that I didn't have Marvin's obituary. And I'm thinking, I don't, it was so much going on that day. I didn't get a chance to, yeah. get, to grab one, even from here. And we had a service in Detroit. I never got a chance to get one. Went to the college. That was just a random thought. So I thought. Yeah. I went to the college to enroll and ended up being there longer than I expected. Make a long story short, I'm sitting there talking with the admissions counselor. And we're going over some of the test scores that I had to take to, to, to get into the college. And she turns around and she looks at me with Marvin's obituary in her hand. Oh my Lord. I said, so you knew my husband? 
She said, no, I don't know who this man is. She said, a week and a half, someone put this in my mailbox, and I've been wondering who, who this guy is. She said, I noticed your last name, and I saw his last name, and I thought, you know. I said, you know what, Ms. Deborah? I said, about, four, about a couple months ago, I realized I did not have my husband's obituary, and I was saddened about it. She said, well, God sent you here today. I don't know what he's doing with you. Wow, that is amazing. He said, she said, and this is for you. I needed that confirmation yeah. that I was on the track to do what God called me to do right. in the area of counseling. Because yeah. I've come up against some things just this year in the counseling session that, I, that was beyond my scope. Beyond, but I would take that moment when I realized that God was confirming my steps. My steps were ordered of the Lord that day. That's how I have my husband's obituary. I got it down from the College of Biblical Studies from a stranger that I never met. Wow. Uh, don't tell me God doesn't care about those little things. Little things. I mean, those the little, little things. Little things, you know, because um, I, just for that to happen, it was just another, like you said, another sign that he's, he's got you. He's you know, pushing you. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. And um, I admire you. I, can I just ask you to speak to these ladies? And uh, if there's some single ladies or widows that ha don't quite know how to start over, just a word to them. I want to encourage you first, those of you who are going through a grief, grief is the price you pay for love. It's just all the part of the process. And grief does not have an expiration date. There's going to be waves, there's going to be triggers, there's going to be things that come, but God is faithful. And those who are starting over, you're not doing it all alone. God is there at every right. step of the way. I mean, the smallest things that God has been in, in the midst of has blown my mind on how much he's concerned about me and my daughters. And he is faithful to his word. His word will not return void. And the rest of your life can be the best of your life if you let God come in and, and move you to the direction that he will have you to go. The best is not just yet to come for me. It's the best is yet to come for those of you here who are even waiting for husbands, who are waiting for spouses. And many Absolutely. people ask me, Am I dating? The answer to I always give them, I'm going to date one man. The one man that God has for me. I know who I am, the identity Jessica. I know where I'm going. I know where God has called me. I know two, two seconds into the conversation if you're meant for me. Yeah. I don't have to worry about it. You don't need my number. We don't need to go to coffee. We need to go out to coffee. I already Good know. Good girl. <laughs> I already know. I don't have time to backtrack. My daughters are watching me. I don't have time to figure it out. I don't, need, I, I, I don't have time for games. I'm that's only going to so date good. one, and that's yeah. the one I'm going to marry. I can only be married to one at a time anyway, so what hey. difference does it make? <laughs> so those of you who are waiting, and you're, when you're waiting, wait well, fall in love with Jesus, and he will send the one who God has for you. That's right. Wow, that's so good. Thank you.